So let me introduce uh, Ksenia Karic coming from Schneider Electric. Uh, Ksenia Karic is uh, uh, country manager of Schneider Electric here in Serbia. Welcome, Ksenia, on uh, Corporate Innovation Conference. Thank you. Uh, uh, also, I'm invite inviting Predrag Mihailovic, uh, CEO of uh, OTP Bank Serbia, and Dan right. Turk, uh, CEO of VIP Mobile, uh, part of A1 Group. Uh, Senia, you're, you're leading Schneider Electric in Serbia, uh, and uh, there is something very interesting uh, related with your start of leadership during this year. Actually, you started mm -hmm. and you were appointed on that position, correct me if I'm wrong, but mid of the March, uh, yeah. which, is, uh, which was right the time when crisis erupted here in Serbia. And mm -hmm. uh, also to mention when we got a uh, state of emergency and totally different uh, environment for, 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 for working process, etc., etc. So uh, also what I learned, you came from, from Siemens to Schneider Electric. And maybe better to say you came from German uh, structure, uh, German uh, culture of company to French culture of company, which is quite different. So mm -hmm. having in mind that, that you jump in a uh, new seat uh, just in the peak of start of the crisis and uh, having challenge of fully different corporate culture, can you express with us... Uh, uh, how it, how uh, how hard it was for you? Can you please share some details about steering the the the, the company during the, the the peak of the crisis and coming from different position from different different culture? Yes, of course. Yes, you heard well. <laughs> you were informed well. So actually, the first day of uh, me being in charge entering the company was exactly 16 of March which was declared a state of emergency for our president, state, state of perfect emergency timing. for Serbia. Yes, yeah, I had a perfect time. So it literally happened like this. I came in the office, I'm around 9.30, 8.30 in the morning. Uh, I met, uh, I think, not more than 10 to 15 people. They were all already wearing masks. So uh, I said, okay, I'm, I'm here, I'm there, but you know, from today we are, online and we are working from home 100 percent so this was the this was the situation what i what i <laughs> this was the first so i entered immediately in the crisis management i would say i would say like that and uh, and i was uh, really i i have to say i was afraid i didn't know how to handle because literally i didn't know uh, my team uh, my my managers i didn't know what to expect how we can merge from work work from from the office to work from home how are we going to have any issues but uh i have to say i'm very proud of that that we are schneider we are we, we were quite ready for this so we easily switched uh okay we had some issues but easily switched from working from office to working from home without any i would say technical issues so uh i really had the uh, great support from from the team and and great support from the also from the corporation side from headquarters and uh, literally the whole company uh, in this period being in uh, april and march we were more on most of the countries on the 100 percent working from home so uh, in real life it worked and I have to say that uh, we reacted adequately to the uh, situation that, that, that was happening around us. And uh, we had some issues, we had some problems also on the logistics side, also on the supporting our partners and our customer. But at the end of the day, we somehow managed. And uh, I uh, met all my team in this, you know, small photos on the team's meetings. I didn't, I didn't met them in person. So I uh, I didn't know uh, what what they didn't know me I didn't know them so it was really uh, I would say a very uh, very strange period for all of us but uh, uh, I uh, we we managed. And, uh, Xenia, uh, uh, just uh, just to ask, 
Um, if you can remember, because we have so much uh, very exciting experience dur during this year, prior to crisis, when you made the arrangement coming to Schneider Electric, uh, was it planned to run some kind of uh, transformation and, and uh, innovation process, or it was planned business as usual? Um, actually, yes, of course, there is something in between. It was like uh, uh, for, in, in, in energy world, in, uh, it was in local Serbian energy community, it was like a football, you know, I'm, I was going to one uh, team, uh, going from Barcelona to Real, it was something like that. But nevertheless, uh, yes, the idea behind that uh, in, uh, in Schneider we should, uh, we are going to de uh, develop further our uh, industry solution portfolio and innovative solutions on the software related issues. So this was behind. And uh, if you ask me, if I recall a uh, comparison between a German structure company to the French uh, structure company, I would say that uh, both of the companies are European companies. Uh, of course, the DNA of the company is different. The culture is different, but uh, uh, I have to say the Schneider is a much faster company than than the Siemens and uh, Schneider as well is smaller and that's then a logic behind so okay later I'm we're gonna, to be here and, okay later we're going to continue about this part of trans tra yeah. uh, transformation uh uh, uh predrag uh, okay in the last years uh there was a lot of talk about banking of of, of the future uh and during this year, we uh, 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 we went fully online and digital, uh, even uh, in the areas we didn't, didn't plan. Meaning, uh, remote working process, uh, meeting with clients, banking services. Also, it's significant increase of your clients uh, going online with businesses, with online shops, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Uh, from your point of view of uh, very, very well experienced uh, a CEO from banking sector, uh, is it start of that kind of future we were planning in previous years? What is your opinion on current and future transformation in banking services? We have to start, we already started in order to prepare for that, uh, that new, new, uh, new future. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Hello to everyone. First, as you see, that uh, pandemic actually speeded up this online process, whether this onboarding, doing business, doing some payments or some other activities. Generally, what we can see that uh, those banks who were forward thinkers in a way that they were starting to build them all online services in previous time, I think for them, COVID can be also considered some kind of award, not only as a disaster, but also some kind of award because they were ready for this process. And I would like to say that not only on behalf of can OTP say, Group. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Predvek. Can we say that anyone was ready for this kind of situation? Uh, frankly speaking, uh, my opinion is the banks were more ready than some other parts of economy. Bearing in mind, uh, I can see from my perspective as a banker and also from the client or the using of online services. What we saw that some in some areas, uh, my perception in shops is was not easy to make uh, online orders. For banks, I would like to say that uh, many clients have this uh, possibility to, to do online business in a way that starting for the online payments for whether it's corporate or the private individuals or to do some other uh, transactions. And also it's a very, for the online business is also very important what kind of regulatory environment we do have here. Generally, as, as a last uh, part, it's uh, whether we are now able and we are finally able to have an online identification of the client, which is very important in our business, in bearing in mind that uh, we are a pretty heavy regulated market and therefore that now we manage to achieve that we're going to have the also environment when we can online uh, on board for the banking services, it, it cannot be considered that online banking is only for the existing customers, but also now we are quite open for the new to bank customers. This is one thing. 
One, another thing that how do we see this pandemic period and its impact on online services is generally that we see that uh, M banking transaction is constantly growing. We hear on a bank level on a Q2 this year, we see on a Serbian market grow 21%, which is significant growth. That we have the mobile payment grow M payment with the cell phones growth almost 50% in this first half of the year that we also have the the online payments also on domestic sites grow for more than 100 it means that for those players who are ready for this they gain benefit from this pandemic period for those one who are not ready i don't think that they had some kind of stagnation therefore i would like to say this uh, pandemic situation from some uh, market players came as a word from some others which are not uh, forward thinkers, I think it came like some kind of punishment as well. You gave us some very good data about increase of some specific kind of services or different uh, or uh, or change of some kind of uh, habits uh, regarding the customers. Okay, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I assume that was not intention of the call coming from the banks and from the business but it was forced by change of environment and change of, uh, let's say, uh, by limitation of possibilities. Okay, what's your opinion? Uh, you already also said that, that uh, uh, it was some kind, some kind of award or maybe to say, uh, maybe also to say accelerator for the, uh, for the ones who was ready to test it, okay? But, uh, what you expect do we uh, do we have some kind of future that it's gonna still uh, stay on that kind of increased numbers or new reality is gonna be let's back to the old numbers let's back to the old habits etc etc <laughs> it's a good question then any anyhow you know what is the people as you're older you're more conservative that is always, it's uh, naturally that uh, no one wants to exit of this uh, level of comfort. Comfort, And anyhow, what I would like to say that we had this COVID impact on uh, speeding up with the uh, online services, but uh, on the market level, we're going to have still the one part of the market which still going to prefer face-to-face -face contact. Not online like we're doing right now, but really they would like to go they would like to enter the branch. They would like to go for the basic services, which we are not as a country still in line with some uh, countries in the neighborhood that the majority of the people still would, would like rather to enter the bank or the branch of the bank to make them, to take some services. And But we are improving and uh, this pandemic situation is uh, helping us to improve and to move the market. We have several banks who are quite active in the market starting to promote online services in order to see as we call cashless branches or to to see that to to educate the market that many of those services you can do from your home there's no need to come to the bank and now with this pandemic as 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 a, as a global circumstances which we are now in it's also can be very very good uh, uh, proof that uh, it's better to stay at your home in your living room watching tv doing something else and your friends and just with, within the few seconds uh, using your uh, cell phone to do all the banking transaction you want to do and uh, we will still be pushing in order to 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 make the market going that direction but also it's we are not the only players we need to have a consensus for all the important players that we would like to see that marketing is going market is going that direction anyhow we see that uh, there is a significant move. We are quite happy. I would like to say not only the banks, but also our central bank is pushing us with the instant payments and some others to speed up the services, to have better efficiency, better quality. And we do hope that uh, at the end of the day, that uh, I'll be very satisfied that we have more than 80% of the customers which are mobile customers. The, that was the customers which prefer online services rather than face-to-face -face services. Okay, we can see Dan Turk from uh, VIP again. Dan, can you hear us right now? Yes, I can hear you. I'm sorry for the, the issues, no, obviously, yeah. but uh, somehow uh, 
You are I right was... on the time. You are right on the time. Uh, okay, so I, I have a question for you, Dan. Oh, unfortunately, we cannot see Dan. <laughs> okay, Dan. Uh, from point of telco industry, okay, which is extremely dynamic during the last decade, but also during this year, it was probably the most dynamic year also in uh, telco industry. Uh, and connecting with that term and real life uh, form new reality, what does that mean for uh, telco industry? Uh, how, how crisis challenged position of, of telco industry in general? Are you still connecting people or you are providing entertainment, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. We can see different uh, examples and uh, different approaches on uh, domestic market, on worldwide ma market, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And can we expect paradigm shift in, in near future regarding telco industry? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So maybe uh, I hope you can hear me. I hope you can see me now. Yeah. Sorry for the inconveniences. More or less uh, at the beginning of this crisis, more or less, I, I told to my people two things, more or less. We have to be fast. We have to be faster than the virus, you know, in order to survive. And the second is, okay, we have to take care of our health and safety first, health and safety of the customers, and then is business. So that was, you know, the first shift. But basically, yes, uh, I do not and I will never use this term you used uh, because I hate it. Uh, I, I call it more, you know, new circumstances, uh, new dimensions. Uh, uh, and this is nothing new. You know, we always face challenges in our business. You know, I, I neglect totally that, you know, somebody wants to force us in something new, but we have to adapt. And this is what we are doing. We've been living this uh, reality now for some time. Society has adapted, you know, habits, you know, uh, probably some habits will be maintained, some of them not. For us in the telco industry, of course, it was a huge industry. You know, we, we for sure, you know, as it says many times, you know, probably the virus digitalized us more than any CEO or CTO or, or whatever in the time. Uh, and we have more or less changed our processes and transformation more or less is here. So. Uh, we implemented, you know, in the company some kind of a hybrid model where we see it is the reality we are facing now and we are working more or less as I'm in the office now. I have 50% here in the office, 50% are at home and we are changing, you know, on a weekly basis. I think, you know, the crisis more or less accelerated for sure, you know, the future development of any digital society, which is good. Uh, we will see probably much more virtual interaction. What I'm still trying to keep, of course, you know, there has to be and always will be a sense of touch screen and touch skin. Uh, and I believe this touch skin factor will become more expensive. And this is where we're basically we are probably developing also most of our services. Uh, Dan, uh, can you share with us if you have any kind of uh, significant uh, or something you want to share with us, some kind of mistake, some kind of uh, chance you, you you lost during this year? Well, you know, we, we are constantly, you know, kind of trying to, to improve ourselves. Of course, I will firstly easy maybe share share some of the wins we, we did. You know, that's okay, always good. easier than the mistakes. Was, but of, the uh, <laughs> uh, but basically, uh, we launched uh, the first virtual store in Serbia. I think it is still the only one, you know, which, which you know, we had in plan of launching a little bit later. So we fine-tuned that. So we have a virtual store now and we're thinking to launch more. So you can call in, you see our employees, you can talk to them, they don't see you and you can order anything you want, you know, except, you know, basically you cannot pay in cash. So that's the only thing which is not possible. More or less, we uh, expanded our possibilities in online customer support. So, so huge additions within that. And we added, you know, a platform called Talk Talk, uh, which a little bit, you know, should move away customers from, you know, Dr. Google style of making their self-assessments, but having really real doctors, you know, talking with them and answering their questions. So these are some of the good things. Uh, of course, you know, out of the things I think uh, we handled uh, uh, not so good was, of course, uh, maybe how to really uh, communicate efficiently 
during the crisis, you know, with mostly our employees. So this, we took some time learning that, you know, because in this initial chaos, of course, that was not a real priority. So we've seen that uh, we should have probably discussed very openly, you know, issues much before. It all came then, then later and we have this online, you know, communication with every single one, but I think communication was for sure one we could do better. Okay, thank you, Dan. We, we're gonna continue. Xenia, uh, a part of the question I, I have also for you, the same uh, like for Dan, uh, about your some significant, uh, let's say, mistakes or, or, or chance you, you missed during, uh, during this period. Uh, also, I think it's gonna be very uh, important for us to hear regarding the fact that we are talking about, let's call it, let's say, energy sector, which is, uh, I assume, very traditional in general, okay? But also it's excellent play playground for innovation and, and trans transformation. And uh, 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 can you bring us, what is the main focus of transformation in that kind of industry? Is it on people? Is it on, uh, 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 it is, is it coming with some technology, technological innovation or, or some new business model? Because we understood that in this uh, area of business, in this industry, pressure is very high. And also you have uh, not too much chance for, uh, for, 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 for mistakes. Tolerance is almost zero. Yeah. yeah. So how to transform, how to innovate in the environment where you don't have almost any chance to for mistakes. Okay, so first of all, thanks to the new technologies and the digitalization, I believe that many companies are ready for this. So as Bradrag and Dan mentioned, they were ready and capable to cope with all the issues that came with the with the pandemic issue and lockdowns of the country. A uh, new way of digital format uh, brought us, you know, that we are learning now. The school is online. We have webinars. We have a lot of uh, doing a lot of uh, podcasts, YouTube channels. So we are using a lot of different sales channels to uh, get approach to the our to the markets, to the customers, to the clients, and to the partners. So uh, I believe it pushed us a bit. Uh, we in Schneider, we are we are talking about the digitalization already. I believe several years in past. So it's really, especially in the traditional countries like Balkans and uh, Serbia, is we need to also to teach and to drive the digitalization process. I also believe that digitalization is not a trend; it's an imperative for all of us. As you see, in the banking sector, in telecommunication, in energy sector as well. Is energy sector, as you mentioned, there are no places for mistakes. We need to be more very resilient, and uh, uh, we are really taking care about all the uh, issues and crisis, uh, crisis situation that can can happen. So, uh, what we have uh, learned, and what are the lessons learned for this period? Already six months we are in this kind of uh, working model, uh, how, like at the moment we are 50% in the office, 50% from home, but it's still working. Our FSRs are working normally, so everything is manageable. And I, I believe that especially in our sector, there are very small place to make or no place to make any mistakes. Uh, the potential what is ahead of us, uh, I think uh, our, we have great potential and big opportunities to catch, especially on our traditional utilities market where we where we sell our products and our solution. And I, I can tell you uh, that uh, Schneider was thinking about this, uh, I think already for five or six years because we acquired, especially now in the COVID time, we acquired several software companies during this summer. So I believe that we are preparing and we are prepared to uh, digital, also energy sector, and also in the software segment, in industry automation, in energy management, and yeah. we are ready to cave whatever it comes. Yeah, uh, a question for you. Uh, do you think that that industry is prepared uh, for the potential next wave of the of the lockdown or something like that, or or it's gonna significantly change the plans? 
no, I think we are ready and uh, we managed to do all the uh, credit issue in these six months. So I think we are ready and whatever it comes in the, let's say what, what we are, what we are afraid and what, what will happen in November, December, but think everything will be manageable and we will not have any more lockdowns of the country. So we have to learn to live with this and to cope with the, the problems and issues what we had. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mikhailovich. Uh, uh, I think I will not uh, uh, make mistake if I said that right now you are leading the integration of the, of the decade in banking sector. Uh, actually, you, uh, uh, you are finalizing the process of acquisitions uh, did by OPP Bank and uh, uh, at the end of that story during next year is going to be one big bank. Okay, and also the fact is that you are doing that during the crisis, or crisis of the country. Okay. Is it good or bad? Meaning, because I assume that uh, tra uh, transformation needs some kind of very strong changes and improvement. Did this crisis help you to make uh, to make this crisis even easier for the shaping for the uh, for sake of the shaping future organization or it was some kind of huge obstacle uh, generally talking integration is quite complex bearing in mind that uh, many of integrations are worldwide actually is uh, always consider that we have trillions and trillions of dollars of investment in integration process and mainly that only 40 percent of the total integration never uh, succeeded in uh, reaching all those financial strategic goals and uh, what does it mean it means that actually being a larger it does not uh, mean that it's actually going to be better and anyhow First of the tasks, since that now we are in a way like OTP is uh, very aggressive in uh, acquisition process in the region and uh, uh, integration between OTP and Wojcicka Banka for sure going to create the single largest creditor in the country. Therefore, we're going to be a bank uh, big, uh, like I always said, that to illustrate like elephant, but whether we can be fast like a uh, Geoper or some, something like else, not only big, but also to be fast and efficient. Even though that we know that elephant is almost uh, running the I'm same pace like uh, the human, <laughs> that it was the way, but uh, we, do, we would like to be faster. And anyhow, what does it mean? Integration in figures, we have three cities, the people involved in this, Belgrade, Novi Sad, and HQ from Budapest. Then we have nearly 600 people only doing integration business that we have hundreds and hundreds of gaps we need to... To, to eliminate in order to reach this and in the end of the day to reach and uh, to have the at least the same level of the customer satisfaction not to see the customers are feeling that we are now going from this period and this is now the point how we'll see that we're going to build the new bank with the uh, facing also integration is not just uh, figures financials accounts but also its corporate cultures as well how we going to align the corporate culture and how we align the customers for the two different banks with quite different expectations, what should be the banking services at this moment, which these two different banks are delivering. How are we going to align this and to make the customers happy that they will see that, okay, this new bank is really is a good bank, which we are looking forward to doing business with it. And there's a, for the biggest challenges to see this, I will always call 360 degree perspective in a way. Integration is not just integration. How do we see in the banks? It's also, it's very important how the market sees this integration and how the customers are seeing the integration. And therefore, for us is not only merging, but also bringing the better quality services, simultaneously understanding their needs and enlarging the bank. It's quite complex. But uh, I also would like to see integration, whatever we talk about, uh, the, 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 the figures, but I think that the uh, success of the integration lies like everywhere under the people who actually participate in this process. Anyhow, the people are those ones 
who are running uh, overtime, who are going into very hard and stressful time. On the top of that, we have this additional stress coming from the COVID. And also we are measuring and we are seeing that also the people are doing this under the high level of the stress. And uh, it's uh, for us to understand them, to help them, you know, that we know if, if they are satisfied, they are happy with their job, they will deliver more. And our task as a management in the gold banks is how to understand their needs, how to guide them, and how to make them happy in order to make all us happy at the end of the day, which will result in the happiness of the clients as well. Yes, but uh, also, uh, if you may add uh, maybe some, some insight regarding the, the fact that you had uh, integration, your point, uh, 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 what is your point? Did the crisis and that additional need for transformation help you in order to be even more productive and to think more about customer experience, etc., etc., or it was transformation as usual? <laughs> it was a transformation, but with uh, potential obstacles in a way that uh, integration is not only the bank with employees within the bank. Uh, on the top of this uh, 600 people, uh, which is compromising with the two banks in Serbia and from HQ, we also have a lot of people involved who are external vendors. Also, we this is our integration and uh, how they perception and how they organize their business during this uh, challenging period, what Dan, other Dan said, it's very important for us that we have common understanding what we need to do it because putting people in the first place, it means that if we need to shift our responsibilities, first is people. Talking about the people, it means our employees and customers. Then the second responsibility is how are we going to respond to the society? Because we are also, as being a responsible company, we need to see what's going to be our contribution and what's going to be the contribution of New Bank. Bear in mind, we are putting all this together to build it something which is going to deliver better quality of services. But whether they're going to speed it up, I cannot say right now whether we can speed it up. We are speeding up in uh, creating the new market demands for the mobile, online, and digital services. This is speeding up. And for sure, giving us a clear guideline that going digital is a good decision. But talking about the speed up of the integration, it's also very depending how healthy providers, real healthy providers and the contributors we have during this period. At this time, I would like to say that we are pretty successful and we are keeping stays on the track. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Turk, how... Uh, okay, let's say that right now it's some usual time to make some plans for the next year to, to start uh, to start or to, to finalize budgeting and uh, KPIs, etc., etc. And you probably saw that you, we have a question from the audience. Uh, how it is uh, difficult right now to, to make the plans for the, for the next year, having in mind that we have a lot of uh, X and uh, Ys and Zs uh, in, in, in that equals uh, in front of us uh, and that we cannot predict so many things. So from the perspective of, of the person who is the running the, the, the system, and one of the main things is a part of transformation and, and, and innovation uh, also to the steer in some uh, directions of the business goals and business results. How difficult it is right now? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, basically, it was never easy. I think, you know, also in this crisis, expectation of the shareholder, the owners has stayed the same. Give me more, you know, uh, deliver more, you know, kind of. And this has uh, more or less has stayed very, very much the same. On the other side, you know, it has stayed the same and even intensified, save more costs, you know. So this is a business dilemma we always had whenever we did every budget and it was never, ever easy. What is important here to know that, of course, you know, there are unknowns, which, which basically you can, you, you have to consider. But one thing which stays the same is the customer, you know, and his demands. And of course, these demands are changing as we see. So firstly, when we are doing now our budget, we are looking at much more complete telco solutions, not only connectivity, but also platforms, also applications, and particularly, you know, what has really, really changed security. You know, we've seen how important security has not only become to big corporate, you know, we've seen a number of, you know, 
uh, kind of hacking attempts, you know, to big banks, you know, or during these days, you know, we see basically hacking attempts to individuals, we see hacking attempts to SMEs, and here we are developing a very, very strong security portfolio. Other thing which is for sure coming is new technologies. Uh, new technologies, the next generation of the mobile network, you know, we've seen that uh, we have come to limits, you know, with this uh, crisis, we have increased capacities up to 40%, you know, uh, during, you know, the, the peak of the crisis and, you know, 4G is here to stay, but it will be another year, year and a half, and then, you know, we are going to have significant network problems if we do not come up with a new technology. The other thing, you know, which is also kind of uh, running the show is gaming. Here, gaming, you know, uh, uh, has huge potential for the future. And, you know, we are really looking into it as a group, uh, what we can do there. There, innovation, you know, I think innovations will continue to be, but innovations which will become more relevant. And I think the most important here is still how to be percepted as a reliable and responsible provider. It's for sure is important for a bank, you know, like Peja very well knows, but also for a mobile operator or fixed operator, you know, dealing with personal information, personal data security, you know, all of the systems, how safe is my communication and everything. So these are, let's say, some of the things which are adding spice to the current business planning period. Okay, uh, then probably you saw the questions coming from audience. Uh, what's your opinion? What happens with Telco when Starlink goes live? Oof, I wish I would know. You know, I think um, this is still still far away. You know, the big questions I have now with Starlink is how will it be regulated? You know, will it be like the Googles and the Facebooks and you know these players which you know are all around us and are not regulated can do whatever they do and you know do not pay their taxes and you know and we. As local players, you know, employing local people, paying local taxes, you know, uh, should somehow know how this is going to be regulated. I, at the moment, from a technical perspective, uh, see my doubts, you know, how this will work and if it will work, you know, uh, we for sure will continue to try to build up the best customer experience, not only, as I said, you know, from a, from a touch uh, screen perspective, but also touch skin perspective and you know a company like Starlink probably never will can bring this touch skin perspective into life okay uh, also uh, Peja a question for you was uh, coming also from audiences uh, what kind of uh, role startups play in your transformation and uh, I know that that already uh, you have very strong connection with startup scene also through ICT hub and you are uh, also, uh, you are a very open company for innovation coming from that uh, uh, startup scene. But uh, do you do you uh, uh, do you have anything else to, to to add and to share? As you know, Dan, that actually that uh, we are the group uh, who are actually promoting digitalization innovation. Since that, if we like to change ourselves, we need to be innovative. Anyhow, we also do recognize that we cannot do it alone without the partners. As you know, we have a great partner in Serbia, like ICT Hub, which is also helping us to promote this digital transformation. But anyhow, talking about transformation, we like we are also very ready also to take the knowledge, to share the knowledge, and to promote knowledge which is created through the startup program. As you know, there's we also giving opportunity for all those startups to share, uh, to have admission to nearly 19 million of the clients of OTP Group. That is, we are giving them as a potential because we think that this potential should be shared. Anyhow, the proper understanding of the startups and uh, and uh, the fintechs is very important for us. Even though in some kind we can consider them as in a, in in a near future as a competitors, but what our uh, perception is as competitors only can you make you better, and therefore we are very open as a group. We have the the startup uh, uh, digital called Generator in Serbia, which we also launched here to help. This year we are trying to to actually promote those ones who have some good ideas to promote uh, uh, the, for SME sector, how going to overcome this uh, yeah. challenges period. And uh, we try also to promote those people who are bringing on a table new models and new, new ideas, not only to promote, but also to support them as well. Thank you. 
I, I had a plan to talk with you a little bit more about customer expectations and customer experience and how that direct, uh, let's say, transformation in this period. But we are out of time. Maybe as a, as a last thing, Foxenia, can you share with us some kind of message for the leaders and for the leadership in this, uh, let's say, challenging period which requires leadership and transformation? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it was not planned uh, and announced. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't, don't worry. So uh, my 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 first, let's say, is that you need to act quickly. You need to be fast, and you need to think uh, two two years up front. So think digital and think uh, about where we're going to be in two years from now. So what are the new ways of doing business? How to do business? How to make this more Lovely, because I believe that nothing will be the same after all this. Okay. Thank you, Xenia. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Predrag. Thank I, you. Hope, I hope Thank that uh, those 45 minutes gave yeah. some answers and uh, even more important, uh, inspired people who, 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 was, uh, who were listening to us. Uh, with some very good message and, uh, messages and good insights. Once again, thank you very much and see you soon.